Hey everyone, fellow composer Mike Phillips here with Museotech, and today we're going to learn how to interface a MIDI controller like this one with Pro Tools. This right here is the Fader Pro Mini. Little controllers like this, they send out CC numbers straight MIDI, and Pro Tools does not recognize that um, in, to control things like volume automation. So, in order to make these work, you have to have a special translation between the box and Pro Tools. And I'm going to show you what that is and how to set it up. Once you understand how it works, it's pretty straightforward. So that's what we're going to learn today. Starting out with, we need some special translation software between Pro Tools and the MIDI device. So I'm going to go here to this company called Bohm Software, Bohm.com, B-O-M-E and I'm going to products to Bohm MIDI Translator Pro. So this is a little piece of software that will translate for you the CC outputs, the MIDI values from a control surface like this one into a language that Pro Tools can understand. So Pro Tools speaks a language called HUI, Human User Interface. Um, there's other control surface languages it speaks. So you need to buy it, $65, um, there's no getting around it. Any little controller like this, there's a lot of them out there, any standard little controller like this um, generally will not speak to Pro Tools or Digital Performer in the way that you might want. So you buy the software and then I got a special script from the company which I'll provide to you guys for free, anybody who wants it, so that you can use one of my controllers with Pro Tools. And I've already loaded up the little script here. Now it's kind of complicated software. You could spend hours, probably weeks, even longer learning it. There's even a special language associated with it. Um, basically what we do is we load up the script and then we click where it says CC to HUI. HUI is the language that Pro Tools is looking for, Human User Interface, I think it stands for. And then I click right here. And can you see on the side, on the far right side, now we have this little list of CC numbers and faders. And I know that's a bit of gobbledygook, blah, 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 programming stuff. And I'm sorry, but um, I'll try to make it as simple for you as I can. So just a quick explanation. So these are seven, actually eight faders. It goes from zero to seven, so there's eight. And I don't know why they're called TT. Again, you don't have to know this whole language here to understand what's going on, so I'll just explain. So these are the fader numbers, and then these are the CC values. And I don't know why it says PP. Again, it's a whole programming language here, which I just haven't spent the hours and hours to learn. But, you know, I don't have to. You don't have to, uh, unless you want to get fancy with it. So anyway, these are the CC numbers. Now take a look. I've already got those pre-set up on this little box right here. Again, this is... Uh, Fader Pro Mini, I make these, they're, they're really slick. So you can set up the CC numbers pretty easily on this unit. I won't spend time with that right now. If you care, you can check out some of my other videos about how to do that, it's pretty easy. So I got this set up to spit out MIDI on channel six, uh, not channels, but uh, CC 16, 17, 18, and 19. So that's already preset. And then if you look at the software, I have also already set this up to 16, 17, 18, 19. And if you're using your own control surface, uh, not control surface, your own MIDI um, unit, then you need to set up your MIDIs as you wish. So set up your CC numbers to whatever numbers you want there. Set up the first four numbers here. And I'm leaving this in the script. It goes up to eight. I'll just leave them in there in case you guys want to use uh, bigger controllers, bigger MIDI uh, controllers or something. All right, but you only need to worry about the first four here. So these match 16, 17, 18, 19. See, you can edit them if you wanted to put a different number. Really easy. All right, so that's the setup. I've got the CC numbers here set up to the same as the CC numbers set up here. Hopefully that's clear. And within Pro Tools, I've already set it up in Pro Tools to work and I'm going to show you how to do that from scratch now. Okay, so how does this work? 
I'm going to go ahead and start up a brand new Pro Tools file here. I'll just call it test3. Do I want to save the old one? No, don't care about that one. <clears throat> and I'm going to add an audio track. So I'm just going to go to track new. Here we go, audio track, hit create. And it's already being recognized. So let me show you how that got set up. So within Pro Tools, we go to setup and there's two things to set up. There's MIDI and there's peripherals, okay? MIDI, peripherals. First we go to MIDI and we go to MIDI input devices. We need to turn on BMT stands for Bone MIDI Translator. That's the software that we saw and also the, um, the fader. So I've got that checked as well. So BMT and Musutech Fader Pro. So I hit OK. I had already done that. The second thing is to go to Setup Peripherals. And we go to MIDI Controllers. And again, I had already done this, but I'm going to set it to None just to show you, right? We set it where it says None to HUI, Human User Interface. We go to Predefined Bone MIDI Translator 1, Predefined Bone MIDI Translator 1, and hit OK. And that's the two setup things you need to do within Pro Tools. I mean, that's pretty straightforward, right? Setup peripherals, setup your MIDI input devices. And at that point, um, the first four audio tracks are going to be automatically recognized. So there's one, I'll add three more. So we'll go to track new. There it is, audio track mono, track new. And we'll do one more. And these are all going to work. So it's like magic, right? Really exciting. You can write on automation with this, no problem. Um, you're probably better off with motorized faders. I'm looking into developing motorized faders myself. Um, but this video was for showing you guys how you could actually interface a standard kind of uh, MIDI controller with Pro Tools. Okay, now we're going to do one more little thing as a bonus. I want to show you how you could actually automate um, something in contact within Pro Tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the programming language here and I'm going to set that last fader to be something different. doesn't matter what. I just don't want it to match this anymore because I don't want to control audio track number four. So I've changed it there. If I go back to Pro Tools as you can see, as I drag fader four, it doesn't work. The other three are still working. But this last one is not working because it's spitting out CC number 19, and I just set this to 20. So I've effectively disabled this for use as a control surface. But that's OK. I wanted to do that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back here and get rid of this audio track, just to keep it simple for us. And in its place, I'm going to go back to track new. And I'm going to add instead an instrument track. Mono, stereo, it doesn't matter. I'll go stereo. OK, so now here is the instrument track. And I'm going to click on this little drop down right here. And I'm going to turn on inserts. This little column here is for our inserts. I'll click right there. And we'll go with a multi channel plugin. Let's go with Instrument Contact Stereo. Now within Contact, I'm just going to load up an instrument. I really like this 90s Retro's trumpet. I think it's really cool. I'm just going to move this out of the way a little bit. And as I drag these faders, you notice nothing's happening. And if you look right here specifically, the MIDI channel is showing a little icon. As I'm moving things, nothing's happening. Normally that lights up if it's being recognized. So the little trick here is to arm the track for recording. See right there? And now as I drag, can you see this little icon right here? It kind of turns white as I drag. It's going to do it for all of the tracks. Um, this is actually pretty cool to show you. Look in the background. See here's our audio one, two, three. Here's the volume, right? As I'm dragging, those are changing. You see those numbers changing right here? These are changing as I'm dragging. 
MIDI still being recognized here. And on the fourth fader, which I do not have assigned to anything yet, that's where I want to do an automation and contact. So all I need to do is kind of decide what I want to automate. I'm going to try right clicking on dynamics and I'll choose learn MIDI automation. There it is. If I say, no, I think I want that to be for the attack. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove that, those automations. Looks like I did one before, that's why there's two. And this time I'll go with attack. I'll right click and learn. And once again, now it's been learned in contact. So they've done a fantastic job, uh, Native Instruments has, with just making it so easy to automate things within contact. All right, so now we have three audio tracks within Pro Tools. And the first three channels, or the first three faders here, are behaving as a control surface. You saw how to set that up. And the final one, I've disabled as a control surface, and it's behaving as a MIDI uh, automation within contact. So anyway, gang, that took me many hours to put all this together for you. I know the video's been a little long, so thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Also, I have a little newsletter if you guys want to sign up to find out what's going on. I'll share with you the latest, greatest stuff happening with Museotech and faders and all kinds of fun stuff. So I really want to thank you for taking the time to see the video today. Have a beautiful day. Thanks so much.